Hello and welcome to another video for Limnob.net. Today I'm going to look at Fedora. I noticed when I created a videos page for my blog recently, it's at limnob.net slash videos, uh, that I had not looked at Fedora on camera. So uh, that was a surprise to me because I had played with it more than once, uh, but apparently I never got around to making a video. So I'll try to correct that wrong. Now, This is Fedora Rawhide uh, 34, and just like Fedora 34 on the desktop, this one uses Pipefire instead of Pulse Audio, which is a default in Fedora 34 once that's going to be released. And that's quite interesting, because Pulse Audio had to be patched, and I think the Pipefire doesn't have to be patched as hard at least to work as a phone. So uh, let me go through the software and let's test calling later. Now there's not much pre-installed. This is chatty, so let's have a look whether it supports more than SMS and XMPP. No, that's not the case, but I think that's fine because it's the same on PureOS currently. I've seen Telegram and Matrix support on other distributions, but honestly that's hit and miss. It works for personal conversations, but it doesn't work for group chats usually. So, interestingly, there are two browsers pre-installed. One is GNOME Web. So let's see whether mobile data works out of the box here. And the other one is Firefox. Okay, doesn't seem to work. So let's just connect to Wi-Fi. As always, we just uh, open the settings app, which apparently... Okay, yeah, that was Firefox starting, so that's why it was slow. Get that. So let's use my funny little network here. And we're connected pretty soon, I think. Yeah, here we go. Firefox is not mobile optimized. Unlike on other distributions, they really should adopt the Firefox mobile config here, because like that it's not really usable. Um, I expect the same to be true for Evolution, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to try further. Um, I think this uh, can likely be fixed by a scale to fit. Um, like, uh, but I don't know what it was for Evolution, so can't do that now. Stop it already, evolution. That sounds strange, saying that. Yeah, maybe... Oh, there's no skill to fit pre-installed, so you would have to use gsettings, the gsettings command that's in... Fuck the compositor, actually, so... Um, that's something. So power statistics looks different from the GNOME usage I'm used to. But I think this is just for battery history and so on. And it also doesn't scale properly. Um, by the way, they don't carry um, the Purism GTK fixes. And Megapixels has the same bug still. On the second launch, it's fine. So I can, for example, take a picture of this thing. Well, it's rolling around, but you can still take a picture of it, right? And that's that. For files updates, pre-install Nautilus, which yeah doesn't scale well either. But uh, that's just that. So, so there's one more thing I need to test, and that is phone calls. So let me call myself here. I hope that I'm still on. Um, Okay, anonymous caller. Let's answer, answer this and... Hello? Hello? I think you actually could hear that. So it works. It works with Pipewire. The speaker feature, feature works. That's quite impressive. The rest is um, rather... Uh, uh, yeah, difficult. I think it's early days still. It's their eighth release and... Um, 
It's tough to make a good Pinephone distribution without carrying the Purism patches to GTK3. I think they are doing pretty well here. And there's a lot that can be tweaked. So this is really, I think, a distribution for Fedora enthusiasts who want to use the same distribution they use on their computer, also on the Pinephone, and who want to just mess with it. Because there's a lot to do here. I mean... I noticed that Newsflash, for example, is in the Fedora repos, and Fedora is usually plays very well with Flatpak. So you will have tons of FlatHop apps here. And there's no downside of the non-patched uh, GTK3 in FlatHop because, well, it isn't patched on for the native packages either. So yeah, I mean, phone calls work, mobile data. I think it's supposed to work too. Uh, let's just check that settings app again while DNF is downloading. 67 megabytes apparently. Well, DNF is always quite data hungry, but it's a really solid package manager, at least. So it's not for nothing. Okay, so no, Bluetooth is not what we're going to do. This is mobile broadband. Okay, it isn't. It wasn't switched on previously. And then I can add a connection in a menu that maybe scales well when we re rotate the screen. Well, sort of, sort of, kind of. And then you can choose your provider here and so on. So, yeah, that's that feels more like a laptop thing than uh, a mobile, proper mobile distro. But I think they are sticking close to upstream. Interestingly, what I noticed is that. Uh, this here, uh, connecting an external display, works quite well. I did that in an earlier test. So I used my HP Elite X3 lapdog thing uh, and connected it to this. And that was quite the pleasant experience. So I'm going to keep fully upgrading this. I think it's worth a try, especially if you're a Fedora ent enthusiast. Have fun with it. One more thing I need to mention. I asked about future plans and there's a plan to make this basically a, a thing like Fedora IoT or Silverblue where you have this RPM th source tree construct so that um, it's a distribution that's basically a solid appliance, if you will. Um, and that's really interesting because that would be quite great for a phone. And... I'm really looking forward to that. But that's my first look at Fedora 4 on the Pine phone. Let me know what you think and have a great week. Bye.